the only thing that keeps this man going is his granddaughter, who never seen him when he had his legs. She's 14 or 15 years of age now. That's what keeps this man going. Now, there's things he needs, there's help he needs, who he will not go to strangers to get. He needs to go to somebody who he can trust. Rightly or wrongly, the services out there, but people won't use them because there's not the thrust there that is needed to deal. And we can say all the nice words we want about people, but we have to face reality. People still do not trust the other side of the community. And even to a certain extent, people within our own community, we do not trust. So we have to be allowed to work within the organisations where we feel safe and in an environment where we feel safe. Not an environment that's created by somebody who thinks they know what we want. It has to be an environment that's created by us, for us. And then whenever we get that, hopefully then we can build on that, which we have done within our organisation. I mean, I think there's over 50 or 60 odd groups around the province. Uh, some of them funded very well, some of them not funded quite so well. Uh, I was glad to see very recently that Geoffrey Donaldson announced um, I think a £6 million package coming into the sector. Um, it's not an awful lot of money when you think of other things that have cost so much money. And in fact, if you actually talk about dealing with the past, the whole uh, Savile inquiry uh, comes to mind and the money that that has cost. So it, kind of, and, and it, it helps to bring some comparison to this thing. £6 million isn't a lot of money into the sector. We need more. Um, but at least, you know, in, in the short term, it will maybe help some of those groups to stay afloat. Uh, but you know, I think we have to get real to this. It has taken us, uh, depending on which, you know, wh where you stand in this debate. I mean, the conflict was 30, 40 years old. Some people would say it was three or 400 years old. Um, and it's going to take us a long time, hopefully not three or 400 years, but certainly a generation um, to come out the other side. And I think that the groups who are around at the minute, uh, providing services for victims and survivors, need to be funded uh, as, as fully as they can be. Um, I think it's probably best left to groups to provide resources rather than to be uh, provided statutory. I think that there's a lot of trust out there and I think some people obviously have trust in certain groups. So I would make a very clear pitch that, um, that these groups need to be in existence. Um, even the groups that are, that are working on a single identity basis, I totally understand that they need to do maybe some cross-community contact in the future in order to build the shared future that I've spoken about earlier. But I do think that they need to be funded and funded well. And they're not at the minute and that's a great um, sadness to me because uh, you know, if the government are serious about putting the vic needs of victims um, you know, first, well then I think that uh, you know, they need to put their money where their mouth is. I listen to certain DUP people, in particular DUP, and uh, saying I'm doing an uh, IRA and Sinn Féin's job, criticising the police. If the politicians would do their job and fight for victims. I wouldn't need to criticise the police. You know, the criticism that I've given towards the security forces and particularly the police was justified. You alone vindicated me. And the, uh, I come from a strong unionist family. I don't vote for any of the unionist parties. Never have. Simply because the, uh, I've seen long before young Rain was murdered. All they were concerned about was uh, uh, themselves. They use the, the word uh, Protestant and religion to stay in power. Let's come back to hunt them now. Well, my family background, and yet I had to go to the head of Sinn Féin to ask for help. I had to go down to Dublin to speak with the Prime Minister of Republic Ireland, Bertie Ahern, to seek help. I had to meet the head of the Irish Labour Party, Pat Rabbit, who raised Raymond's case in the Doyle. You know, people from uh, strong nationalist Republicans who are, they believe in the United Ireland. And I had to go to those people for help because my so called own turned their back. And what they done? They turned their back on justice and they turned their back on the truth. Consultative group on the past, we were talking about Lord Eames and Dennis Bradley. It was an NIO creation, it was created by Peter Hume. You know what I mean? As a way, in our opinion, to deflect attention of dealing with the, the reality of collusion and state murder and issues like that, and then try to take us into some sort of cul de sac. I mean, Lord Eames, if you like, is there to manage the Unionist or the Protestant constituency. 
Dennis Bradley is there to manage the Republican or Nationalist constituency? Who's there to manage the British government? And it's violations of human rights, it's mass murder, not only directly, but indirectly using the likes of the UVF and the UDA as proxies in its war against Republicans. So, in us, the, the consultative group on the past has been created by the British government to deflect or take us away from getting at the truth. I hope the Eames and Bradley uh, panel understand how deep the hort actually runs and that they pick that up from that. But I know we have to move on from the hort, but it doesn't mean the hort is going to go away. It's not going to go away. But we have to learn how to deal with it. And no better people to tell you how to deal with it than the people who actually were affected by it. For too long, too many people have been telling us what we must do and that we must move on and put the past behind us. It's not just as simple as that. The government's uh, frightened to put victims on it. If victims go on it, uh, they'll be open and honest. They know exactly where victims are coming from. They've had the experience of losing a brother, sister, father or mother, a close relative. I mean, the consultative group in the past, I think, have a very um very difficult uh, task to fulfil. Uh, I mean, they've been given a year basically to come up with something which other groups have been working at um, for um, five or six years. I'm a member of the Healing Theatre Membrane Project, uh, which has been looking at these issues for five or six years and uh, has got loads of research um, on the back of that, uh, built up on a whole pile of different options for, uh, for dealing with the past. I don't know if it's any great omission that they're not included in it, to be honest with you. I think that um, obviously it was very deliberate. Um, I suppose the issue you would have would be if you were going to have victims and survivors on the consultative group, well then which victims and survivors would you have on and who would they represent and you know what sections of society would they, um, would they be representing and I think it was very deliberate that they, um, that they didn't have them and I think we have to just wait and see. Um, at the end of the day they've been going around and they've been consulting with victims and survivors so the victims and survivors voice should be in there anyway. Uh, and if it's not, well then, I guess victims and survivors will rule on that whenever uh, their outcome becomes final. Uh, I suppose the other thing I have to say is that you know, victims and survivors are a very diverse group of people and it's unlikely that they're going to come up with something anyway that's going to work for everybody. And so no matter what they come up with, I imagine that it will have its critics. Uh, in fact, I'd be very surprised if it doesn't have its critics. It is a wider issue than vic just victims. But if you don't bring the victims, you will not bring the community. People will have to realise that we can't leave the past behind us. We have to bring the past with us to learn from it. There are victims who want, who would be uh, satisfied with hearing the truth, with no prosecutions. There are other victims, like myself, who wants to see people in court. There should be no, uh, nothing set in stone that uh, concerning an amnesty or something like that, there are people coming into a room. If, if, if that's what some of the victims want, give it to them. But the law shouldn't be changed to suit terrorists. And what the, the government uh, are suggesting and leaking to prepare the people for is an amnesty. In our situation, prosecutions have never worked. I mean, from, from the day and hour that, 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 that the policemen or the British soldiers or UDR men have killed Catholics, Nationalists and Republicans, they have never served a day in prison. They have had amnesty from the day, the minute that they pulled the triggers on our relatives. So there has been a de facto amnesty out there for Crown forces for, for, for so many years. The fact that there's been never proper investigations and the, the majority of the collusion cases is also about cover-up. The RUC have never probably investigated and there has never been proper follow-through in terms of, of prosecutions. The inquest system has been nabbled to the point where it's, it's, it's totally ineffective. All I, can, all I can bring forward is findings. The name of the person, their address, how many bullet wounds they had, etc. It can't apportion blame or say who killed them.